The Edge of Eternity and Cameron's Customs and Hot Rods can be seen right here anytime. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Go Poppy! Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Bill with The Edge of Eternity. Um, wanted to welcome you tonight to the service in the garage. Uh, we'll get started here in just a minute. I did want to tell my grandchildren thank you so much for making that little video for me. You just saw it at the intro of this uh, video. So thank you kids, I really appreciate it. I also, as usual, I want to ask you to uh, don't forget to check out all my friends that are in uh, the description in this video. Uh, super great people that I just really, I really love. And I also wanna to say tonight a special thank you to my friend Joey Collins uh, from Mill Creek Fab Shot. He sent me a great sticker that uh, is his logo and I have the perfect place to put it, Joey. I'm really excited about it and uh, I'll tell you about that some more later. I'll do a video on it when I set that piece of equipment up. All right, let's go. I uh, put on the board here tonight, from fear to peace. Last uh, Sunday night we talked about fear and uh, how the world tries to control us with fear or a boss tries to control us with fear or the devil tries to control us with fear. Fear is a great way to control somebody. Now, should we use fear to control somebody? No, we shouldn't, but it happens all the time. And so we talked about that last week. We discussed it uh, in depth. Now tonight I wanna to talk to you about peace and uh, I'm gonna ask you a question I want you to think about. Is there anything in your life that you feel uneasy about? Is there anything in your life that you're not comfortable with, but it's still there, it's still part of your life, it's still part of your day, and uh, you're just not really happy about it, but not quite sure what to do. So let's talk about that. Um, the uh, peace or the uneasiness, uh, the um, things that make us worry, could be anything, could be a big decision that you need to make, or it could be a big decision that you have made and now you're doubting it and you just, kind of wrestle with that decision and you're worried about it. Um, is there something going on in your life? And I think this takes place in a lot of people's lives. Is there something going on in your life that only you know about? And you know it's not right. And you'd like to get rid of it. You'd like to make a change, but it's just not that easy. Maybe, maybe that's you, maybe not. Um, is there someone in your life that you love or care about deeply and all of a sudden they seem distant to you? That's something that can really weigh us down and um, maybe that's the case. Um, I wanna share with you what I do if I begin to struggle with something uh, and I've learned to do this through the years. It's nothing that you can just say, okay, I'm not gonna worry anymore. It's something that we learn as we have a relationship with God. And it's something that's really powerful and works great. Um, I'm, I'm not kidding, but it's something you have to experience. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it tonight and then hope that you will want to experience what I have to share with you. So, um, these scriptures that I'm going to read to you tonight are uh, Bible verses that are uh, very foundational for many, many Christians. We rely on them, and uh, we should rely on the Bible. And for things like when it comes to peace and worry and being anxious, this scripture that I'm going to read to you tonight is very, very fitting, very, very powerful, and very, very helpful. So let me read to you from Philippians uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. I re wrote down where you can find it in your Bible. And uh, after we're done here tonight, maybe take just three or four minutes to read through it again for yourselves and see if anything really speaks to you. But let me read this little section for you. 
it begins by saying, rejoice in the Lord always. Now, when you're worried, when you're anxious, do you feel like rejoicing? It's not the normal response when we're getting down about, you know, when we're, we're struggling with something. But this is what the Apostle Paul writes in this letter that he wrote to this church in Philippi. Then he says, I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. That's a really important uh, little section right there. Four little words, the Lord is near. He is always around us. If we accept him as our savior, he lives within us. Um, that's where he resides. You know, we talk about going to church or having Sunday night service in the garage. It's not because this building is a church. It's because Jesus Christ lives in my heart. And I pray and trust that he also lives in your heart. We accept him by faith. And uh, when we do that, he enters into our lives to help us. Do not be anxious about anything. Now here is those uh, foundational verses that says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So while well, what's one way we can have peace What's one way we can rejoice? He says, hey, learn not to be anxious about anything. Don't let the things of this world that can weigh us down take our life away. Make us struggle. Make us not want to go on another day. Because God is so much greater than all of these things. And he's, he wants us to know that he's here to protect us and help us and to ease our mind. Um, that is who Jesus Christ is. Goes on to say, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely or whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. You know, where our minds go I might have mentioned this on here before. I know I've mentioned it at the church many times. Where our minds go, our body follows. Now, if I engage my mind and my heart with the Bible and with Jesus Christ and this relationship, then my mind is and my body both will want to follow him. Uh, if you meet a man or a woman and you fall in love with them, your mind is on them. You want to go and be with them. You want to spend time with them. It's the same type of a scenario uh, with Jesus Christ. When we meet him and we begin to see who he really is, we find that we want to learn from him and know more and more from him. And so these scriptures tell us that, and they say that, you know, think about these things. Think about these good things. Let's have our minds set on those things. Like the Bible says, you know, we want the mind, our mind to be the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that which was in Christ Jesus. Um, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, this is the Apostle Paul who's writing this, or seen in me, put it into practice. So Paul taught a lot of things to the early church. Here's one small section that deals with peace in our lives. He's saying, if you put these things into practice, the God of peace, the God of peace will be with you. That's a good thing. We may not think we need God. We may not think we need help. We may have all sorts of uh, ideas and opinions we've formed over the years, but I can tell you, from my own personal experience and testimony that God has changed me and, and has given me joy unspeakable. I, I can't thank him enough. So here's a question I will ask myself. Do I want 
panic in my life or do I want peace in my life? Well, it's an easy question to answer. Of course I want peace. But we don't always do what we need to do to get those things that weigh us down out of our lives to experience this peace of God that transcends all understanding. Um, maybe there's a sin, you know, that's hidden down deep and if you anybody found out about it, you'd be devastated. Um, we need to walk away from those things as hard as it is. We may love those things, but as hard as it is, we know that they're not right and we need to separate ourselves from those things and turn to God. So I want you to ask yourself, do you want panic or do you want peace? Do you want worry or do you want freedom? You know, we talk a lot about uh, Jesus Christ and who he is, you know, the savior, the one who forgives us of our sins and brings these, uh, this joy and peace into our lives. We talk about him all the time. There's a uh, scripture in the Gospels that says, for who the Son sets free, that's Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Again, listen to people that you know who have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Get them to share their story with you. If you already have a relationship with Christ, Share your story with others because your story is evidence that people can't argue with because that is your story. And your story may lead someone to a relationship with Jesus Christ. This is so important. And if you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, please seek it out. Okay. <clears throat> have you watched the news lately? Uh, we see all kinds of things going on. Oh, there's a new Delta version of the virus. You got to get the jab. Should I get the jab? I'm not feeling good today. Do I have COVID? Oh, what should I do? Oh, I heard today that the United States is attacking missile sites in Iran, blowing the places up. Are we getting into another war? I'm not sure I can drive to work this week because the prices of gas are so high and everything costs so much more. And uh, I just don't have enough money. I've got to make some really hard choices. These are the kind of things that day in and day out can weigh upon our minds and just rob joy from us. And when we don't have joy, we just are miserable inside. And then other people can see it. Whoops, other people can see it as well. But just stop for a moment and think about what a good solution might be to those type of problems. Um, there are so many real questions that we have to deal with. You know, I mentioned some here, but there are so many real questions that we have to deal with and struggle with. And God wants to be present, present in your life to help you. When I was uh, a youngster, my dad was still alive. And if he saw me getting down or discouraged about something, um, whether it was something worth being discouraged about or not, he would simply tell me to count your blessings. See what God has done. And when we stop and look and we see how God has cared for us, we realize that we have all we need. Now, I know some people on here, other friends of mine that are out, you know, in the world working and, and uh, making a living who are struggling. It's not that we won't have difficult times here in this life. But when we have them, we have someone who can give us peace and get us through those times. And we can have hope because when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you have a hope that um, 
needs to be experienced. I've seen so many incredible things happen throughout the years of following Christ as my Savior that I never would have experienced had I not known him and trusted in him. So we count our blessings. We see that God takes care of us. And I look at that first little part of that scripture where it says rejoice always. Some uh, translations in the Bible and some different verses even say uh, literally um, give thanks in all things. Give thanks in all things. Give thanks because I've had to spend a couple of weekends underneath the hood of my truck in 90 degree weather busting my knuckles when I'd much rather be in my garage working on my Z28, taking it easy and just having fun. Yeah. Give thanks. Give thanks. I have a truck. I can work on it. I can fix it. Is that so bad? Did God help me? Absolutely. I was having a lot of trouble with one part, trying to get it off of the engine, okay? Just a real pain. And one of my boys stopped by, and how's it going, Dad? And so on and so forth. And I, I said, I gotta take a break. Let's go, let's go in the house and uh, you know have a glass of ice water or something like that. And we went inside and then we walked back out and, and he uh, had to take off. But he said, hey, Dad, I'll pray for you that you get that, uh, that taken apart and back together. I kid you not, I know, you know, my sons pray, so does my daughter. And I don't think he was five minutes down the road and this thing lifted right off. <laughs> what changed? My son prayed. What should I have done long before? I probably should have prayed, but you know, I can be hard-headed too. And uh, I called him on the phone uh, actually, he was on his way up north on vacation. He had just stopped by to let us know what was going on. And so I told him, I said, hey, your prayer worked. Thanks, buddy. And, uh, you know, I, I know I put a smile on his face. I can't remember how he replied, but um, it, was, it was great. It's a small thing. It's a small thing. But it's one of those things that we see there's evidence that God hears and answers our prayers. Um, so being grateful and remembering how God helps us is step one in taking the edge off of our worry and cares. Okay, the next thing he says, don't be anxious about anything. Oh, sure. It's easy for you to say you're God. It's not that easy for me to do. But uh, we can learn from experience as we see God answering prayers in our lives that we don't have to be anxious. And it's a really, really good feeling. It's a blessing. And now the next step, he says here, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Let me ask you, do you ever pray? Do you ever go to God and say, God, I'm struggling with this. I just, I just can't seem to get through this issue Will you help me? Will you, will you help me understand what I should do? Would you guide me and, and just uh, give me peace so that I don't have so much stress and worry about this? He'll do it. Um, the Bible says we have not because we ask not. If you don't ask, you don't receive. It goes on to say, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find knock and it shall be opened up to you so there's so much simple good advice in this bible that we can uh, learn from so there is a resting place for us and i'm not talking about the one when we die i'm talking about right now and that resting place is in a relationship with jesus christ he is the one that makes all things new. He is the one who can make a change in someone who they didn't even think was possible themselves. So here's a promise if we follow the steps laid out for us. 
and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So the picture in that verse, if you were to paint a picture of it, would be Jesus Christ literally encircling you, going around you, protecting you, watching for Satan to try to defeat you or to deceive you and protect you from those things that would otherwise harm you. This is exactly what this is saying. And this is exactly what we need to do, is put our faith and trust in him, and he will be our peace. He will be our protector. Let me read this last little bit to you. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is why I spend a lot of time reading the Bible because I get my mind fixed on these kind of things, okay? And as I said earlier, where my mind goes, my body follows. Where my mind goes, my heart follows. So I need to keep a real focus on God. Uh, he loves us. He wants to give us peace. He wants to help us in our time of need. And it all begins with knowing him. So my other question is, do you know him? You're the only one that can answer that question. You can tell me you know him, and I would rejoice. But only you know if you really know him. It's between you and him. He can help you. So let's make a choice. Let's go through this next week not being weighed down by worry. Let's go through this next week. Remember to do this. When something goes wrong or something gets tough, doesn't matter how big or little it is, say, God, will you please help me with this situation? I'm calling to you now. You know what I need, amen. It's that simple, I mean, really. God knows, he knows. Before you ask, he knows, but he wants you to ask. Uh, he's described as a gentleman. He doesn't force himself on you. He waits for your invitation. All right, let's uh, have a closing prayer here and let's keep our hearts and our minds on Christ Jesus this week, especially when we face problems. Remember, that he will take care of you. Father, I thank you for this evening that we could come together like this and just spend uh, 20 minutes talking about the Bible and about how you care for us and how you don't want us to be worried or have fear in our lives, but you want us to have peace and you want us to have peace that you give. I pray for everyone who is listening to this tonight, Lord, that they would experience you and that begins with a prayer. And I would ask any of you who are listening tonight to pray this prayer along with me, truly believing in what we're saying here. And that prayer goes like this. Jesus, I confess to you that I am a sinner. I know that. But I want to tell you that I know that. And I also believe that you died on the cross for us, for me and you shed your blood, which is what purchased my salvation, or for the opportunity for me to accept you. I thank you for that, and I do accept you into my life as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me and giving me this new opportunity to know you and to experience peace that we can't find in this world, but that comes from you. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. And I thank each one of you. I look forward to talking to you again real soon and uh, pray God's blessing on you this week. Good night.